Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. This is a great attacking game. In the white corner we have Magnus Carlsen, world champion. In the black corner, Jan Krzysztof Duda played round five of the FTX Crypto Cup. This uh, tournament taking place in Miami. And well, if you remember from the last video, we left it with Magnus Carlsen sharing the lead with Pragnananda. So, well, big one for the tournament standings. In fact, this was game two in the mini match between Carlsen and Duda. Carlsen was beaten in the first game very well by Duda. So Carlsen in this second game already with its back to the wall. It's a Berlin and Carlsen decides not to go for the end game but to keep the tension with d3. And Carlsen has a lot of experience playing with this pawn structure. This solid pawn structure prevents black making a breakthrough in the middle. This is such a strong structure. There's no there's no d pawn to, to hit out here. And that shell, that strong pawn shell, gives white freedom to play, well, as we'll see, on the king side. Let's see how Carlson did it. Normal move here is to play knight c4, but Carlson dips the knight back to f1. <clears throat> and then here we go. He launches a kingside attack straight away. Now, this kind of attack is not unknown with this particular structure, but this is at a very early stage in the game. So Carlsen playing so directly, that's very much his style. If he has a plan, he carries it through. Rook e8 played, and this is very normal. The rook steps over and makes room for the knight to dip back here. Knight e3, the knight pops out, and it uh, looks like it could be heading here. a5, so Duda starts his counterplay because he's on the queen side, because he's thinking, well, it might be the king ends up casting queen side, that's not unknown. So it could be good to start a little pawn storm over here. Rook g1. Carlsen continues his kingside build-up. You know, you can get away with these moves when the centre is closed. You can see the king is actually quite safe behind those pawns for the moment. Knight f8, so this is the standard plan that Duda is carrying out. The knight can protect the king, but also might come into one of these squares to look at the outposts on d4 and f4. So this is absolutely normal. H4, there's no need for black to panic here. Because, in fact, if you keep your pawns just on the second rank, it's very hard for, for white to make a, uh, an actual breakthrough. Even though, you know, this looks very impressive. But, you know, hang on. You know, how do you actually make the breakthrough for white? In the meantime, Duda continues to gain space on the queen side. You never know when... Could be useful to have those pawns stormed up the board, but basically black's position is sound. There's nothing wrong with it. Now, this is a clever move from Carlsen. Bishop g5. You don't really want to put the queen on d7. Not a very nice square. Blocks the bishop. Then queen d2. Yeah, then followed by h5. Yeah, this, this could be a little bit annoying with the bishop perhaps able to come in on the dark squares. So I think after bishop g5, very understandably, Duda simply pushes, just blocks the bishop, and the bishop has to retreat. Then again, white now has something to bite on on the king side. Now, uh, Carlson plays, uh, to my eyes, a slightly unusual move, bishop d2. As we'll see, he wants to use that bishop on the long diagonal. Uh, and it is extremely dangerous. I mean, for me, bishop e3 is a more practical move. Because this bishop on c5 is a strong piece. And the bishop has certainly performed a useful role on g5 by just inducing this pawn move f6, which means white has something to bite on. When this g-pawn advances, it means the g-file is actually going to open. 
and that has consequences for the king. And yeah, I think I prefer bishop e3. White would be very happy to see that exchange because it covers the outposts that, that the knight can't get in on those squares. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and, you know, knight e6, the pawn is going to come to g5 anyway. But as I said, bishop d2 is more uncompromising. It's, as we'll see, it's very dangerous. And Duda already wants to take steps against the g5 advance just by pushing his king away from the g-file. And again, this is typical Carson. He is so direct. He has a plan. He executes it. It puts maximum pressure on the opponent. He could have hung back. He could have pl first played king f1. That might have been more prudent. What should black play after g5? I'll flip the board round and you have a little think. White has just played g5. How would you play here as black? Cheers, slurp tea time. Well, Duda played bishop takes knight. Nice to get rid of that powerful knight on f5. And then e4. Now you can see the difference. A couple of moves ago, we had that strong pawn chain. The e-file was closed. The king was safe. But after that exchange, the e-file is open and the king is exposed. Let's flip the board back. This is the problem. But this is still incredibly double-edged because in playing the e-file forward, <coughs> the, the e-pawn forward, it opens this diagonal. Queen d5. So you give something, you get something. Queen d5. So black's pieces look very well placed in the middle of the board. But here's Carlson's idea. He took on f6 and played bishop c3. That's why the bishop came back to d2. He's now threatening mate in one. Bishop to f6 is actually checkmate. So Duda needs to get his moves absolutely right in this position. Otherwise, he loses. Queen takes f5. Remember, it's a rapid play game as well. It makes it, you know, this kind of direct play, as we saw with Prague in his game against Aronian, often it pays off, and often it pays off for Carlsen. Rook g5, hitting the queen. But the queen gives check. King g1. And now rook g4 check. So the king has no move. White has to exchange. And that takes a lot of pressure from, from black's position. This is still a threat. But it's easy to parry. Knight d7, good move. Because that will allow the rook to enter the game. And it just needs one move here, rook g8. And that could have fatal consequences. The queen and the rook combining to attack the king. So the game has suddenly spun round. This counterattack is very dangerous. Carlsen plays knight h2. If the queens are exchanged, that's exactly what white wants. The knight is attacked, and if that moves, then bishop takes pawn check. So queen takes pawn. Now, nice pawn to take, but it also covers the f6 pawn as well. But then again, queen takes knight. Suddenly, Carlsen is a piece up. But Duda had it worked out. Bishop d6 cuts back. Threatening mate in one. Now Carlson could avoid immediate trouble by giving up the bishop and bringing the rook into play, but actually after this exchange, then black's queen breaks through and then a couple of clever checks. That covers the g7 square, so there's no mate. And then the rook comes into play and once the rook comes into play, combined with the queen, 
that's going to be fatal for White's King. So this one is not easy for Carlson. He plays King G2. Queen takes Knight. And now it's Duda's turn. Start checking. Um, if the king steps across, bishop f4 check, the king comes back, and then bishop g5, you can see that rook on a1. It can't get into play with the king on d1, and, and that should be winning for black. So that's why Carlson played king f1, to keep open the possibility that the rook might be able to come into play on one of these squares. So what do you play as black now? Hmm... You do have a draw here, and given the match situation, remember Duda was one up in the four-game mini-match, a draw is not, certainly not a bad result for black, but there's something better. What did Duda find in this position? I'll flip the board again so you can look at it from black's perspective. Black to play. How do you play here with black? The move here, it's a very, very nice move, queen c4 check. So I'll flip the board back. Now, if the king steps to the g file, that's easy. The rook comes into play. This is the key point in the position. Who can bring their rook into play? Well, this one is absolutely fatal for the king in combination with these pieces. So after queen c4 check, Carlson played king e1. Now, this is still a big threat. So rook f8, that's pretty calm. But, it, but with the king of the back rank, of course, the rook can't get into the game. But rook d1, okay, this is still tricky. How do you deal with this? If that rook gets into the game on perhaps one of these squares, it starts to be very difficult again. Queen e4 check. Now if the king steps up to d2, that's actually checkmate. No time for the king to escape over here. King f1. Queen h1 check. King e2 once again. If Duda wants a draw, he can bring the queen back here. But after his next move, Carlson resigned. What is the next move? Queen h5 check. So why did Carlson resign this one? This is a very neat idea. I think, well, let, let's see all white's options. Why did Carlson resign? Okay, let's, first of all, what about king f1? Well, with the rook on d1, queen takes rook. Thank you, game over. Rook up. Okay, what about king e1? Ah, with queen on h5, protecting the rook, the rook comes into play, and very soon that is checkmate. This is the key to the position. Can the rook get into the game? Okay, so what about king d2? Bishop f4 check again. Check. And queen h1. And... If the king steps up, well, you can see that one is pretty good. Okay, so that basically leaves us with f3. And again, rook e8 check is the key. And let's see, king d2, again, this is absolutely fatal. That's checkmate. And finally, king f2. Okay, we may as well go to the very, very end. You can do it all with checks. And the rook comes in. And there we go. The kiss of death checkmate to finish. What a fantastic counterattack from Duda. Remember, this is rapid play. And it takes precision to finish off these kind of positions. But precision always takes time. And when you're playing against the clock, that is real pressure. But the key moves in that counter-attack, um, queen c4 check, this is a very nice step, and then a couple of moves later on, 
the fatal move, queen h5 check. Very nicely played by Duda. Um, in fact, uh, Duda kind of messed up in this match. He was 2-0 up, but Carlsen hit back with two wins, so they went to a tie break, which Duda actually won, but it meant in, that means with their scoring system, instead of a 3-0 match victory, he scored a 2-1 match victory, uh, which meant that so Carlsen got one point, uh, which did help him because Prague actually lost his match against Ley. So Carlsen is still in the lead, a slender lead, so all still to play for, two matches to go. Um, but I thought it was a very interesting game. You know, Carlsen played in his very direct way, a bit too direct, often it, it pays off. Um, but I, it's, Bishop g5 was very good, but it's that move Bishop d2. Bishop e3 just feels more natural to me, but then again... Like I said, sometimes Carlson gambles and so often it pays off, but not in this case. Uh, I'll be reporting back and I'll let you know what happens in the FTX Crypto Cup. Thanks for watching.